Hey guys, in this video what I want to do is go over the sleep aid by the name of Relaxium. Um, you probably saw the advertisements on TV and there's a lot of people that have asked about it so I want to cover it. We're going to go over the ingredients, what I think of what's actually in it, look at side effects, and then at the end I'm just going to kind of give you my overall take as a pharmacist. So I want to hop right into it. So Rel <laughs> Relaxium is a product that's got a whole host of ingredients. It's got like eight ingredients which I'll talk about in a sec my thoughts on that but first one we've got a mix of some magnesium salts um, it's very low dose I don't know how much it's really doing it's 100 milligrams and there's a mix of salts I'm I'm more inclined to one particular salt but it's got oxide magnesium citrate and um, the glycinate in it so uh, kind of iffy on that the tryptophan the reason they'll put tryptophan in it, when you eat tryptophan, it's a, an amino acid, it's eventually converted to serotonin, um, but actually very little of it's converted to serotonin. And again, the tryptophan in here, most people get plenty of tryptophan through their diet, so I don't think there's a lot of benefit to it. They have Valarest, which is their proprietary um, valerian root. Valerian root does show some promise in helping people sleep, um, but it's a pretty low dose once again in this, so I'm not sure how much it's doing. Uh, ashwagandha, you know, a lot of people use this for anxiety. The evidence for it on sleep is kind of iffy, also a low dose, and people can get gastrointestinal side effects with it. Then we have gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA. Um, once again, it's it's one of those things that um, it shows some promise but the dosing um, is kind of questionable on this you normally get it from fermented foods uh, chamomile most people have heard of taking chamomile tea to help you sleep there is some evidence that it will do that but again in the product very low dose of this product so i'm not sure how much it's helping passion flower i've done a video on passion flower before um you know, there's kind of mixed results in the studies when you look at it, so I'm not completely sold on it. Once again, a low dose in this, so I'm, I'm not sure how much it's doing. The biggest one I want to talk about, and the last one, is melatonin. Now, they put 5 milligrams of melatonin in the relaxing sleep aid. To me, that's way too much. And the reason I say that, if you look at most people, like, melatonin is secreted from your pineal gland, okay, and it the amounts that are secreted will give you roughly 60 to 70 picograms per milliliter. So where are we at here? 60 to 70, that's the average. And that only lasts for a couple of hours, then it goes down. Um, and you usually hit those values um, very early in the morning while you're sleeping, say midnight to two, three, four o'clock, somewhere in there. Um, but when you take They've had studies that shown even four milligrams, which is less than what you have in Relaxium, will produce blood levels in the 4,000 picograms per milliliter. So it's many, many, many times what you would normally produce in your body naturally. And that has some downsides. One of which is that that melatonin remains at high levels for up to 10 hours, so you can get very groggy. Um, and the other thing, you can get side effects from too much melatonin. So I'm really not a fan of taking that much melatonin. I've done other videos on melatonin as a sleep aid. It's not my first choice. So not real big on the ingredient list. Uh, is it safe? There's, there hasn't been any reports of people getting violently ill or anything like that. But you see a lot of reports of stomach side effects and nightmares. And when you take high doses of melatonin, it's an extremely common side effect for people to say they get these really weird dreams and nightmares. Um, can elderly use it? They can. It wouldn't be my first choice. Um, not because it's dangerous per se in the elderly, but because I, I don't think, I'm, I'm a little leery of all these ingredients. And I again, I don't like the high dose of melatonin. So overall, my take is um, can it be effective? I have had reports of people saying, yeah, it helped them get to sleep, but they didn't stay asleep. And there's a lot of people reporting grogginess in the morning. Again, we're coming back to this melatonin. So reports of waking in the middle of the night are fairly common. Um, I think it may help you get to sleep. I don't think it's going to help you stay asleep. We talked about the grogginess. 
The ingredients I'm not a fan of. There's just a whole bunch of them, like they're throwing stuff against the wall uh, to impress people. I don't know another way to put it. And I'm really not a fan of the high dose melatonin. Finally, um, you've probably seen uh, Mike Huckabee. They use some big names to push the product on TV. They give you a really good deal the first month and then they want to bill your credit card each month after that. A lot of people not fond of that business practice. I don't have anything against it personally. A lot of companies do it if they do it the right way. There have just been some shady reports on the relaxium. So overall, not a huge fan. I think there's better avenues to go. So let me know in the comments, have you taken relaxium? Did it help? Did you experience side effects? What was your overall take? It's helpful for other viewers. It's helpful for me. So I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.